Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from The Smart Stitcher and welcome to this week's video. This week we are looking at inserting our thumb pieces into our glove. So I'm going to take you through the stages that I use to insert the left and the right thumbs. So let's get into it. I find it really useful to keep the cardboard templates that we created um, handy so that I can refer to things as we're putting um, the glove together. Now you will notice that on the glove template we have some letters that I've added. We've got point A, B, C and D and these also correspond to the similar points over here on the thumb piece itself. So we've got A, B, C and D. Now you will have spotted that I've added a slight sort of number next to B and I've also gone straight across my pattern piece to the other side. Now this is just to help me construct the thumb piece as you'll see in a moment. So all I've done on my pieces of leather is just make a little mark with my pen through that particular hole. For the purposes of this video I have marked these points A, B, C and D and B1 and B2 on my leather. If I'm making a pair of gloves normally I wouldn't have marked everything on here. I know that the gel pen I'm using does come off so as soon as I've got everything in position I can remove the uh, the gel pen. If you go down the route of marking your leather please you always check first before you sort of write on your sort of glove section to make sure that you can get it off and it may be that you just use a piece of low tack tape which you can then write on but something that doesn't actually damage the leather so always test and always be careful if you are going to mark your leather. So as you can see we've got the left hand side laid out we've marked our points on and when the glove is actually stitched together the points start to look a little bit like this. So we've got point A up here, this is point B which is on the thumb section itself, point C is just this little part here and then point D is back up at the top there, just as we have out on our pattern piece here. So let's get to stitching. Before we start any sewing, I just want to remove any little bits of fluff from the inside of my glove. So I'm using a piece of low tack tape and I'm just very lightly dabbing it over the area just to pick up those bits and pieces of fluff that I don't want going into the final glove. We are then gonna fold our thumb piece in half. So this is the back of the leather, the sort of slightly furry bit. This is the smooth side of the leather facing out and I'm going to fold my thumb piece in half so that it looks a little bit like that. Now on my template I can see that my line where B, I've joined B1 and B2 just looks a little bit, um, a little bit high on that side. When I fold my pieces in half I want the thumb piece to be nice and smooth. B1 and B2 are just a guide to, to sort of help me level everything up. I don't want this thumb piece looking like it's being pulled or it's got any wrinkles in it. So I'm just going to fold that over and I'm uh, going to add just a few sewing clips to hold the leather securely before I start to... Yeah, I'm going to put in a few tacking stitches to hold this together. So these sewing clips they sometimes they can mark the leather a little bit so I'm just keeping them on the line where I'm actually going to be sewing so I'm not going too far into the glove. So we've used B1 and B2, I've brought them together so that I have got a nice sort of level section here. Obviously you know if you look at your pattern and you think that just looks a little bit uneven then you can make a slight adjustment mine is just an adjustment of a few millimeters so that that then sits nice and flat so when i'm sewing my glove i'm going to be doing my tacking stitches using a between number 10 and a single strand of wax thread when i'm doing my permanent stitches i'm using a between number seven and I'm using, for this particular glove, I'm using a Gutterman's 
I believe it's it's 100% cotton, a quilting cotton, and it has quite a nice sort of glaze on it as well. So that's really nice. So I've got probably about um, 80 centimetres in my needle, which I've waxed and I've doubled over. So the first part of this thumb piece that we're sewing is going to start at the very top of the thumb piece and we're going to come round to point B. Now my tacking stitches, I'm just going to pop in a few and I'm going to make sure that they're on my seam allowance line and I just want to do a few so I can get rid of the clips. So I'm just taking a moment to make sure that I've come through on that particular section make sure that you don't pull all of your thread through leave a long enough tail where it's nice and easy just to do a little knot now we don't want the knot to grip the leather we just want the knot firm enough and sort of cuddling the edge so that it holds everything together when we take that clip away so i can get rid of my ends there we go, it makes life a bit easier to see without the long threads in the way. So I'm actually just going to pop in uh, another stitch. I'm going to take out this clip up here. I'm checking that my edges are nice and level. And then I'm going to make my stitch. I'll just check where I am on the back. Yep, I'm happy with that. And I'm coming through again making sure that I'm leaving a little bit of a tail, just enough so that it's easy to grip and then tie a knot. When we come along and sew these, we are going to be just very carefully clipping the thread so that we can then cut it out and make sure you don't twist your threads as you're sewing with it as well, because that'll be really frustrating. So I'm there, I'm on the edge, and I've done my two stitches. Now that should be enough to hold this particular section. If you think you need to add more, by all means add more, but I just want enough to make sure that I keep my B points level with each other as they are more or less on my template. And then I'm now going to start my sewing thread up at the top of the glove up here. So to do my first stitch, I've opened out the top of the thumb. So I've sort of peeled back that opening and I've gone through the back of the leather. Now you can't see the needle from the front, but I've got enough of a bite there that the needle's not gonna come out. That's fairly securely in there. So I'm going to go through and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. So this is a waxed thread. We're pulling it through and when going to leave perhaps a slightly longer tail so it's easier for the, the camera to pick up and I'm just going to pop that under my thumb keep it out of the way and I'm going to go through again just like we do when we did a, a starting stitch in my, one of my previous videos check that I'm not coming through at the front and I'm not which is good so I'm going to go through and before I pull the loop tight I'm then going to take my needle back through that loop, almost like if I was doing sort of a, a buttonhole stitch or something like that, and I'm going to pull the loop nice and tight. Now check, because we're using a double thread, we want to make sure that both threads are lying nice and flat, and I've just given my tail a tug, I'm just giving that a gentle tug now. That's nice and firm, I can see that it's not coming out and I'm just going to very very gently just hammer that section to help that knot sit nice and flat so this will make the camera shake so my apologies for that but I can feel it with my finger now that's gone much flatter and then I'm just going to lift up my tail and snip nice and close to the knot you may find as you start sewing that you get a few sort of fluffy bits from the leather poking out and I can just see just about here you can see a few fluffy bits that I've got poking out so I'm just going to turn that over and with my leather scissors I'm just going to trim those little bits off so that they don't get in the way when I'm sewing 
for my first stitch I'm going to be bringing my needle out from in between my layers where I've done my starting stitch and I'm bringing it out to the front so I like to bring my needle out on my stitching line I'm going to pull my thread through and this is just bringing my thread out from the inside to the outside now I do like to do a little back stitch at the start so where I've come out and I'll just show you I have enough space to go back through and do a little back stitch so let me show you what that would look like so I'm just going to make sure my edges are nice and level and I'm going to come back down I'm on my seam allowance line my stitch is very very small and I'm going to come out on the back where I want my stitch to sit check that I'm happy with the front and away we go so that's just for the first stitch I find it just a little bit helps to sort of go back on yourself just a fraction and you want yes you want to pull your stitch tight but you don't want the leather to start to wrinkle so as you start to sew and we're just going to do the pre-stitch now starting at the fold where the the leather is folded here coming up and over and down to point B so that is going to be the path of our stitches when we get to point B we're going to stop and we're going to do something different now for those of you that have been following my wonky line on my thumb piece I'm actually going to refer to B1 as my stop point just because that I know is both the same for both of my glove pieces so I'm now just going to work my pre-stitch around the top of the thumb uh, keeping my edges level and just sort of checking that I'm coming out in the right places so I find it quite handy just to turn over when you are doing your stitches you want to keep them a consistent length and a consistent distance apart and this is where it's always really good to do a little bit of practicing before you start sewing so always keep an eye on your threads make sure that the back is nice and flat make sure that the front is also nice and flat as well your lamb napper if you're using lamb napper can be a little bit more forgiving than other leathers now you can see there that I'm perhaps a little bit out of alignment so I want to go back and just reposition the needle as it comes out check my first hole because I was happy with that one so that I'm consistent with my stitch length there that looks a little bit better so hopefully if I just angle that you can see that slightly better I'm going to come out there so I am going to now stitch around to point B and then we'll show you what happens next so I've reached a point where I'm ready to remove my first tacking stitch my stitches I've tried to keep them a nice smooth consistent consistent gap and a consistent stitch length and that consistent distance from the edge and as you can see it gives you that really nice look now if there are any wrinkles you can just make sure just ease them back out flatten everything out don't worry about any hairy bits that start to emerge because we can cut them off at the end now with your tacking stitch it can be very very tempting to just slide the needle underneath and try and rip the stitch out in theory that should work but just be cautious in case the thread is quite strong and you end up breaking the leather so don't you last thing you want to do is rip through anything that you are sewing so I've got my nice sharp scissors I'm just going to lift up that knot and I am just going to very carefully snip through and I might just need to use my needle to pull that out there we go and I can then pull that out nice and safely I'm then going to carry on my sewing all the way down to point B where we're going to start adding in the trank where you have removed a tacking stitch you want to try and then if possible use the same hole so that your needle goes through the same hole or that your stitch covers up the hole um, and then as you'll just carry on sewing 
So we've arrived at point B and I've just bought my thread out just above, very fractionally above the line that we're now going to cut. So we're going to open up this line that goes from B to C and obviously C to D as well. And this is where you need to be really careful that you follow the line, but you don't don't be tempted to overcut and sort of go beyond your your sort of marking point here. So I'm going to switch to my leather scissors and we're going to open up along that line. But I'm just going to make sure because the last thing I want to do is catch the back of the thumb piece. I want to make sure that I am completely focused on that front bit, which I am. So we can now snip along that line and we're going to just be really careful not to overcut at that end. So I just want to go right into my mark, which I've done and I'm happy with that. So now we're going to join it to the trank. The first pieces I'm going to join are B and C. D will then come around and clip up that way and A will come out from underneath the bottom of the thumb piece and go that way. I find it easier to attach B and C first so I, I'm going to just level the line up and initially all I'm going to do is just clip it into position. I'm then going to make sure that I go to the other end and sometimes I've just got to, I find I, I'm a bit short on one side, so I need to move my, my glove piece up a little bit, move that along, and then I'm going to pin C into position at this end. So that's one of those jobs where you could do with a hundred or so hands, but this is why I always start off just pinning these two and then I'm going to clip them. So I can always reposition the clips if I need to. So I've got now B and C are in position. I'm then going to come up to D. Now I find it quite handy to sort of almost tuck just the very, very tip of that just into the trank a little bit. So if you like, there's a couple of mils just on that sort of inside there. So whoops. As I say, you could do with 100 hands when you're doing this. So we'll just re-clip and then we'll slide that in, maybe even sort of three or four mils, but we'll see how the rest of the, the, the pinning comes together. So I'm just gonna hold that now and I'm going to then flip over so that we can find point A because I'm now going to clip that up into the corner so that it meets point A. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Now we are going to be tacking it, so don't sort of panic if it sort of feels a bit confusing. I find it useful to clip first and then I can check that everything, I'm sort of happy with everything. So we've got our thread, just pull that thread out of the way for the moment. And we've got point D joined, we've got C, we've got B, but it looks like there's been a bit of slippage so I'll sort that out and we've got A. So I'll come back to B and C and we'll just make sure that the sewing thread is completely out of the way and I'm going to re-pin those, with, or re-clip those so that they don't move because we're then going to tack. There we go, that's much better. So I'm going to have to do just a fraction, a bit of easing to get that into position. But when I come back with my tacking stitch, that's where I want to be really accurate. So what we've done now is we've pinned A, B, C and D. And I'm gonna get those tacked so I can show you what they look like. And then we'll talk about the rest of the thumb piece down here. So we have our A, B, C and D now tacked into position. So I can see that I've got yeah, a good gap there. When we come to sew between B and C, we might just sort of compress a little bit of the excess so that it sort of stays within that particular line. I've got D and that's got a, a good amount of um, ease, but it's also nicely sort of into position. So we, in a way what we've done 
is we've got this now ready for sewing and my thread is going to come across the thumb so from B to C we're going to go up to D when we sew when I then come back over to this side I'll start another thread up here at B again and come up to A and then down and round both threads will come down and round and meet somewhere around the middle before I do any more of the actual sewing what I want to do is get my excess and this is the the sort of that base of the thumb piece that's going to sit around the sort of the fleshy part of our thumb we want to get that evenly distributed into our thumb hole on our trank so let's start clipping so I've got a couple of clips in I've got my a b c d are still tacked and I've just put a clip in just a little bit down from a and a little bit down from d and what we want to do is work from side to side to put attach our thumb piece into our trank but what we don't want to do is to be left with a kind of a massive fold or anything to have to get rid of so I'm going to put a couple a couple of clips in one side a couple of clips on the other side and gradually work my way along and I'm going to try and ease the thumb into position so as I've got my leather now I'm trying very hard not to pull anything but I want to sort of almost because I'm working with a curve and I'm easing it into position I want to as I go along I want to make sure that my edges are level and um, when they're level I'm going to clip them so you might find that for this section your clips are a little bit closer together than we had in the initial part of our thumb piece so I'm just working my way around I'm trying very hard not to pull anything and because it's a soft leather it it can be tempting to sort of pull it sometimes but I'm putting my clips in so I've done a couple on that side I'm now going to come around and do the same on this side so I'm just pulling it so that the edges are level and I know it's a curve but they'll sort of look level and sort of a little bit straighter. So that's a bit tricky at the moment. We are going to tack it so if there's any sort of tricky bits we will sort those out before we finish clipping and then it makes tacking a little bit easier. So let's just have a look now. So I'm lifting it up and I'm very, trying very hard not to pull but I want to level the edge so I'm almost sort of using a finger to sort of push the excess of the thumb piece against the outside of the trank there just pulling them nice and level and then I'm gonna pop a clip in again it can help if you've got a a million pairs of hands I think with this particular part so I'm only still clipping on my seam allowance line so let's come over to the other side again so I'm sort of keeping the trank nice and straight I want to then just press the thumb piece into position but I want it to be nice and straight add a clip and come back again oh looking good so far so let's just have a look now so I'm, I've got a little bit more to pop in and I'm going to just come back to this uh, other side, my left side of my thumb. Make sure that that is nice and level. Pop a clip in. And then, oh, look at that. That's worked out really nicely. So I've got this last bit here to do now. And I might just stick a finger underneath so I can push the edges so they're nice and level. And then I'm going to clip. Now I'm going to add my tacking stitches next and anywhere where I think um, there's a clip. So there's going to be a few more tacking stitches in this particular bit than there has been with the other section. Let's just have a little try on and see. Now put your hand in nice and gently and just obviously remember that it's not yet stitched. So we don't want to bust our tacking stitches open and it's going to be slightly difficult to sort of really pull it on but you sort of get a sense of how it's starting to look so yep happy with that so far so the next thing we're going to do is put some tacking stitches in I'm going to try and put a tacking stitch where every clip is if 
during the process of clipping the leathers have slipped a little and they're not level this is the point now where I want them to be level so I'm going to make sure that when I tack it the stitches are level because it then makes the next sewing stage a little bit easier so we have our final bits of tacking completed on our thumb piece and we're now going to continue stitching with our main red thread so the first thing I'm going to do is travel from B down towards C and then I'm going to go towards D. Now you might find that somewhere between B and C there's a little bit of, of an excess that we need to, um, to factor into our sewing. So I'm going to get underway and then I'm going to show you if you have a slightly longer piece on your thumb and a slightly shorter piece on your template how we can sort of ease the thumb into position to help those both sit correctly. As you can see I've had a very small bit of space enough to make one stitch on the approach to point B so I've made my final stitch on the thumb piece and then I've now come out at point B on the trank. So now I'm just going to pull my needle through keeping an eye on my threads because they're going to want to catch around anything and everything and I want to make sure that I then pull my two threads separately so that I can check that my stitch is laid flat. So there we go, done that and we just make sure we ease that and now because I'm focusing on the bit between B and C that is the bit that I now want to pinch between my fingers to sew. I'm going to take my tacking stitch out in a moment but I am a little mindful that sometimes as I'm sewing I can end up walking my excess away from myself which is what I don't want to do because I want to be able to make sure that that stitch is nice and tight and nice and firm and it will settle once the point here goes in but for the moment I just want to carry on with my stitching so I'm going to yeah, keep that nice and firm I'm going to use a stitch ripper this time and I'm just going to lift that tacking stitch out of the way and this is where you want to make sure, even though you're taking your tacking stitch out, that your ends are still level so your leather isn't sliding away from you or creating an uneven edge. So I'm just going to have a little look there and I can see, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm now, I'm pinching the seam that I'm going to sew and I'm going back into my leather. I'm checking where I'm coming out because I'm changing, sort of going around a corner this time. So I want to, yeah, I'm gonna be happy with that. So let me show you, I've gone through to create my stitch. And again, I want to keep the same consistency, line, length and distance from the edge. And I've now come out up here. So let me pull that through. And the sort of little technique that we're going to be using, because my thumb piece here is a little bit wider than the bit on the trank and all I'm going to do is I'm going to just have a pull a few millimeters of leather back towards my stitch on the thumb side and then I'm going to come through normally on my trank side so all I've done is just sort of scoop up a little bit of the excess. If you can imagine, this is a bit of an exaggeration, but if I push that there, there'd be a sort of a slight bump. And in effect, all I'm doing is a little bit of pulling it one way with the needle to then go straight through into the trank. Now that's a technique we're going to be using on the sort of the main sort of skirt I suppose as we attach everything together now you don't necessarily want to do that every stitch we just want to do it at regular intervals to ensure that we get a good um, line and length and but we also can absorb any excess leather so we'll just pull those nice and firmly as we go along if you happen to over pull them 
just take a moment to ease them out and then we're going to carry on. Gloving leather is really vulnerable to stretching so as you are sewing your gloves try to make sure that you're not yanking it about too much. There we go. So it's just worthy keeping an eye on that line and length. It's one of the reasons why we don't open up the fingers until we actually are ready to stitch them and that just helps to offer them a little bit of security and a little bit of protection. So I'm going to continue sewing the rest of this and then I will come back when we are at point C ready to go off to point D. So I've stitched from point B almost into point C. I've stopped about a stitch length away from the corner and I'm now going to go into the corner to create that final stitch. So I'm going to place my needle right in the corner and I want to come out so, so it feels almost like I'm making a slightly longer stitch but I've gone through where I'm making my stitch in the corner I've come out again in my trank and I'm just going to pull the needle through and then we're now going to just sort of double check that we don't need to ease anything out there and that's nice and flat and then we're now going to go from C to D I did add in an extra tacking stitch as I just needed to remove the clip because it was in the way of a camera. So as I come along and now sew, I'll be able to just move that out like we've done before. Sometimes a stitch ripper, if you've got a nice sharp one, you can use a stitch ripper to move it out as well. So I'm now, where I'm changing direction, I just want to make sure that I've got a nice straight line that I've got my edges that I want to sew together are easily accessible and I'm now going to come back and make my stitch. Sometimes I find it quite useful to just do a slightly smaller stitch on the corners or a slightly longer stitch say on, on this, the, this side but a slightly narrower one on the inside just to get me around the corner so I might not have as much of a gap on the inside here. You can just sort of see where my, my needle is poking out. So I'm going to come through and that often just gives me a bit more stability. So it's a longer stitch on that side, angling in a little bit more to make a shorter stitch on the um, sort of the inside there, just to get me round the corner. I'm now going to carry on and I'm going to sew up to point D and I will then pause and come back and show you what we're going to do next. I've now stitched from C almost to D and I've put my needle in. I've got enough space on this side to do one more stitch. So I've put my needle in and I've come out, as you can see, at point D on the back here. And I'm now just going to pull my thread through and check my loops and make sure that nothing is pulled too tight. And then obviously now we want to sort of come around this corner as though we're going to start going down on the other side. So this is where I'm going to make my slightly longer stitch. And then I want to just have a little look here so that where I come out, I come out on the, on the inside of the leather again to make sure that I can continue with my line of stitching. So I... I'm just going to have a little look here at where my leather's going to go. Now this is where we tucked the point in. So if you look under the, underneath here, we've tucked this point in. We can snip that off when we finish sewing. But I just want to get my needle into the right position. So I'm going to now, I've got know where my point is. I'm going to go like I'm going to make a stitch, but it might be a slightly longer one just to give us a little bit of breathing space and then I'm going to look to come out fairly close to my previous stitch there we go can you see we've just just in a little bit on the leather there 
but just enough for me to create my stitch. I'm then going to try not to get it tangled around everything else. Pull it nice and flat and then come back. And now because I've sort of come up one side of the corner, I'm going to just pop that, pop the tip back inside again and I'm going to do another stitch. But this time I'm going to come out at the top but on the other side. So if you like, we are now coming around the top. So on this particular pattern piece, I'm sort of doing a stitch here that comes approaches the top and then I've got a stitch that's almost going across the top and then coming down the other side. And that stitch that goes across the top here helps to keep that thumb piece in position. So it's a little bit of wiggling and pulling things around and it's, there we go, come up through and again I'm just going to sort of check my loop so I'm going to make sure that that tip of that thumb piece stays underneath so that we can sort of see it there and I am going to make sure that I've flattened everything out, that I haven't pulled anything tight. And I will, because we're gonna go onto the other side shortly, but I will just do a couple of stitches coming down this side, but I'm a bit concerned, I've got a bit of a knot here. So I don't know if you can see, I can get my needle underneath it, which isn't a good sign. So let's just have a little look and see if there is a bump there. So I just lifted that up and we'll pull it down, pull it nice and tight. There we go. And we'll pull the other one again. Oh. There we go, that's a bit better. So I can ease that out a little bit more now. Lovely. So sometimes it's always just good to check your stitches, make sure if there is any evidence of any lumps, just to sort of ease them out before we then carry on sewing. So now because we're changing direction, I want to come down the outside of that sort of thumb piece. So I'm now just moving my edges to make sure that I can then do that as we come along. So I keep catching my thread, which isn't good for the video, but let me move that out a little bit. So we're now coming down that outside, and I'm just gonna do a few stitches just to show you, and then we're going to go and join the other points down to point A. So again, we're just checking where we're coming out. And there we go. Liberate those loops, keep an eye on them and make sure they're nice and flat. And then again, we're wanting to maintain our consistency that we've got with our other areas of our stitching so that we maintain that line and length maintain the distance from the edge or while well, sewing some gloves. There we go. So if you think, as I say, the lamb napper is a little bit more forgiving if you think you've come out in the wrong position. So always just keep an eye on that and just reposition your needle if you need to. which is why it's always important to do a sample and you can sort of get a feel for your leather. So I'm just going to go as far as my tacking stitch there and keep that nice and flat. And we're going to pop that stitch in and that's now going to be our last stitch on that side. We will carry on sewing, so we'll just leave the thread attached for the moment. What we're now going to do is attach our next thread here and go from point B down to point A, and then we're going to bring both of those threads around to the bottom here. I'm now coming back up to sew from point B to point A and around. So I'm going to just open up so I can start my thread off, and I'm going to start my thread off in the way in which we've been using so far. So on my seam allowance, I'm going to go into the back of the leather 
check that I'm not coming through to the front and I'm going to leave a tail and just pinch that and I'm going to now go back through and before I pull my loops tight I'm going to take my needle through as I'm sort of almost doing a bit of a buttonhole knot and I'm going to pull that nice and tight cut off my ends and then I'm just going to give it a nice gentle hammer so get those bits out of the way and I'm just going to give the knot a bit of a hammer to make sure that it does lie flat as much as possible I just want to try and get the rest of that bit of glove nice and flat too and then we're just going to hammer that and you can feel that it will go a little bit flatter now we're going to start off with a, a back stitch again to make sure that I get a nice secure grip as I bring these two pieces of leather together. So in order to maintain my stitch consistency, I want to make sure that I bring my needle out so that I've got enough space to come over to my right here to do a stitch. And I have, so I can pull that out, keep an eye on the loops, make sure they're nice and flat. Now I'm going to bring those points A, B together and I want to now start sewing. So my first stitch is going to give me that extra bit of security and I'm going to go through both layers of leather and I'm coming out if you can see, so I've come out in the other point B that's over there that we were started with earlier, but this time I'm going towards point A. So we're going to stitch in much the same way as we did with our previous stitches, keeping our stitches nice and small, and that gives us the security that we need to join our glove pieces together. So always keep an eye on your loops, make sure that they are lying nice and flat, and then away you go, down to point A. So I've stitched down from point B down to point A. I'm just about to come into the corner. I've uh, stopped sewing on the other side of the thumb piece here, and I've got enough on this side of stitching to be able to get one more stitch out there. So this is where I'm going to take that slightly sort of wider stitch. So the stitch on this side is narrower, but coming out on the back here is going to be a little bit wider. And that's just gonna give me a bit of strength to make sure that I can keep the glove itself, the that part of the glove right up into the corner. So I'm now going to come across the top like I showed you just on the turquoise glove a little bit earlier and I'm going to make a slightly smaller stitch on the inside here and I'll show you what that looks like so I've actually come out fairly close to my previous stitch so I've got a slightly longer stitch across the top and a slightly narrower stitch as I come up in the inside of that particular point and we're going to pull that tight again but make sure that we haven't sort of wrinkled the leather and then we're going to now set up so that we can come around that curve section and I just want to make sure that the leather is completely level and that I can then start stitching so I've just shuffled things around so that it's completely flat on either side so I haven't got a big kind of crease here that I'm trying to sew round, a bit like that one there. I've pulled it completely flat. This is where having the tacking stitches helps to hold everything together. So I'm now, I've just got those, that sort of part in between that tacking stitch and that last red stitch there that I'm just going to be sewing. So I want to make sure that my thread is free of loops and I'm going to come along and stitch along here so I want to sort of look like I'm coming around my corner nice and evenly 
pulling these into our stitches there we go and we're off again so we're now going to be coming down that curved part now I you may find that you have a little bit of an excess on the thumb side of your glove and you're as you're sort of putting it together now what we don't want to happen is which is why we've got lots of tacking stitches is as I mentioned earlier we don't want to end up with a big lump um, in the middle where we finish our stitching so the reason why we've got these tacking stitches is that then we can start to work in much shorter distances to ease anything out in between that distance rather than trying to do everything in one go so we know that it fits and it's now just a question of sewing it so that it stays fitted without either of the leathers sliding against each other if you've ever put a sleeve in a jacket or on a blouse and you've had to ease it into position you'll be quite familiar with what we're having to do here so we're sort of pulling one against another in order to get them to fit and it's much easier with the gloving leather if you can do it in smaller increments it helps keep your sanity as well so I'm going to go along and I'm going to now sew probably until about halfway almost to the L and I'm going to bring both sides down so I've now sewn from point A around down to my L which is about halfway around the thumb so as you can see we've got a nice seam there we've got some nice gaps between our stitches and we're now going to come over and do the other side and we're going to bring this down to meet that thread we're almost at the point now where my two threads are going to meet I have stitched round from A point A and I've stitched round from point D what I want to do now is keep the pattern of the stitching right up until the end now what's going to happen is we're going to keep our stab stitch pattern so something that looks a little bit like this and what we're going to do is keep that pattern so that the stitches will come together but they won't actually be there won't be two stitches next to each other we will then take this thread go continue around to the left by a couple of stitches and the thread on the left will come around to the right for a couple of stitches so there will be four stitches where the thread overlaps so just to give you a little bit of advanced warning on that one I'm now ready to do my final stitches so I have got and so my threads have ended up one on one side one on another side which can be quite helpful because it then puts you in the right position to do these final stitches so my thread that I've got here is the first one I'm going to finish off and I'm going to go through my leather but I want to come out on the other side where I'm going to a sort of almost a stitch width away from the other thread so I'm just a very small stitch away and I'm going to pull my needle through keep my threads nice and flat for the moment I'm just going to tuck the other thread out of the way and I'm now keep that out of the way and we're going to come back through our existing holes to start our finishing stitches so I'm going through from the back and making sure that I come out in the right hole on the front and I'm going to pull my thread through. Because I'm going through those sort of repeated holes I will also be just giving my other thread a tug to make sure that they, there isn't any sort of loose tension that creeps in. So I'm then going to do a couple of stitches through that particular area. So I'm going to go back through the holes again really carefully so that the stitches are as discreet as possible. So I've now gone through two hole stitches 
And what I'm now going to do is I'm not going to go through both pieces of leather again. I've got a hand underneath and I've opened out the panel. Because what I want to do now is go through the leather that I've got here. But I want to bring my needle out on the back of my leather. So I'm just going to, I want to sort of, if I can, come out sort of in the middle of the seam. So I've got a stitch, a sort of a half stitch on this side and I'm pulling the thread through from the back here. So I've, in effect, you can just about see I've come out right in the middle of that seam. I've done my loop check, everything is nice and even. So I'm now just gonna drop that needle and we're going to switch over and repeat with the other side. So this has quite a, a small stitch to start us off. So I'm going to just pop my needle in and make sure that I come through nice and carefully. So if it helps, you know, you should be fairly okay, but just, you know, remember to give the other thread a bit of a tug if you think there's anything that's become loose. And then we're going to make uh, another couple of stitches. So just again, you want to come out in the same spot. So don't be tempted to try and create new holes. Come through to the front. Oops. And then we're going to create that, that sort of final stitch. I've just got to make sure I'm coming in in the right spot. So I've turned the work round. And I want to make sure that I'm coming out in the right position. So you've got a bit of a close up of my fingers then. But it's meant that I've been able to come out in the right spot with my needle. So I'm then just going to check my threads, make sure that they are, I'm happy with them, which I am. And I'm now going to do that half stitch. So I want to open out the seam as much as I can. And I'm going to just go through the leather from this side and actually I've come out in a really good spot there I don't know if you can just about see so I'm now going to come through and I'm going to just pull that nice and tight make sure I'm not wrinkling anything pull the other one and that's actually really good I'm happy with that so now we're going to do our finishing stitches very very similar to how we start but this time I'm pulling the leather because I want to use the stitch to secure my knot. So I'm going to go under a couple of stitches and that's just literally on the back here. So I've gone under a couple of stitches and that just gets my thread away from where I came down. And then we're going to do a repeat of our starting stitch. So I'm going to go under that one stitch, just like we've done with the starting stitch, go through my loop, pull it nice and tight. And when I'm finishing, I do tend to go along to the next stitch and just do a couple of finishing stitches just for a bit of security. So I'll do another one pull it tight and then I just tend to go under the next stitch and cut my thread off and I'm going to repeat that at the other end with the other needle so I can then finish both my threads off and then we're going to hammer it so let us start off looking for those stitches which we've now found so I'm sort of pushing pushing the leather over my finger to expose the stitches and I'm just going to take the needle underneath like so and then we're going to do our first finishing stitch keep an eye on your loops make sure that they behave themselves and they get pulled nice and flat now that one just needs a bit of a tug to make sure that it goes down there we go, in the right place. Excellent. So I'm going to just do another stitch to finish just for a bit of security. So I'm going to go under that one. 
and do that a second time and then I'm just going to come up again I'm just going to expose those next few stitches so that I can very discreetly and the reason I go under the next lot of stitches is I think it just helps to, the knot to sit a little bit flatter within the seam. I just want to double check I'm not visible from the front, which I'm not. So I'm now going to pull my thread through. There we go. And that's really nice and firm. There's nothing going to come out of that. I'm going to cut off the thread. Now I will probably just discard these threads and not use them for, any, for the next part. Now, we've, where we've finished our seam off, we just want to hammer that flat. So I'm just going to just very lightly flatten the knots. And you can, of course, use a bone folder if you wish, but I find a little hammer that I just keep for leather work really handy to just help me flatten the knots out. So a bit like when I'm sewing, I'm flattening a bit and then I'm going to hammer it just makes life a little bit easier and I apologise for the shaky camera. There we go. So I think you can feel if there are any sort of raised knots and I think actually I'm pretty pleased with that. You can also just very gently go along and flatten if you wish, it's not something you have to do, but just gently hammer out the stitches. We often do that in leather work because it just helps them to sit better. And the last bit, of course, is to try it on. Make sure you've taken all these tacking stitches out. And actually, I've got quite a good fit there. Um, I'm gonna need to make sure I ease it on so that it sort of sits properly on my hand, but it's nice, feels good so far. And remember, this is the mock-up pair. So as we go through, we're gonna be looking at our stitches, we're gonna look at what's happened, and we can then tweak and make any pattern recommendations and any sort of pattern developments. So I won't make any developments just yet because I need to finish the whole glove and then I can sort of make some decisions about if I want to then look at the rest of the fingers. So well done. The good news is that the other side of the glove is just the same, but of course everything is now reversed. So for the right hand, we've got still got points A, B, C and D, A, B, C and D, but as you can see, they are now completely reversed. So everything, we do exactly the same process to put the right thumb in, but just remembering that your points are slightly different because we're now, you know, it's all working on that mirror opposite. So good luck with the right thumb. As I finish sewing, I'm just going to now dab my pen marks with a baby wipe because I don't want them to remain on for longer than necessary. So as I say, I wouldn't normally put pen marks on if I was sewing a pair of gloves, but for the purposes of explaining all of our points, it's a little bit easier to do that for this the video. So if you do, as I say, please, please, please don't just go writing on leather because lots of pens will actually mark your leather. Always check and make sure that things come off. Um, so anything you do needs to, to come off. So I think we have covered all of our pen marks and then our thumb is now ready. Um, ready for wearing but obviously we've got to put the rest of the fingers in so thank you for joining me good luck with your thumbs and in our next video we're going to start looking at how we sew the fingers